I got into a great Twitter uh, war last night. Yeah? Yeah, mine always turn like racist. But, you know, hmm. what do you expect? They just do. Yeah, a couple of cops down there in uh, Florida. Oh, right. Got shot. Tampa Bay, right? Yeah, shot and killed um, by a... Uh, they, they were doing a traffic stop. Uh, the guy had warrants. It was a, a male and a female in the vehicle. Uh, they were getting the guy and put put their hands on him, I guess, to arrest him. Uh, one of the cops actually called for backup, and the second one showed up. And this gentleman spins around and shoots both of the cops and and, and kills them. Wow. Kills both of these cops, hops in the car, and just leaves. Is video? Um, I'm not sure okay. if there's dashboard cam video. It, no, none's been released. I don't think they would release How did two that. cops get... Quite like Here, that. Here's what I'm suspecting happened, and this is where it turns into a racist argument, uh, and people call me racist and everything. I'm thinking they saw the two occupants of the vehicle, a male and female uh, black couple, and instead of thinking for their own safety, they were thinking, let me not offend these people by uh, profiling them and using certain precautions that I might have to use for a guy that has warrants out uh, because I don't want to lose my fucking job when this asshole uh, says that I treated him unfairly because he's a black man. That was my kind of, you know, uh, just my thoughts on the topic because of what's happened right. of late. And uh, so instead of thinking of their safety, they're thinking of treating him like a gentleman with respect and they get uh, shot in the face, both of them, uh, for their troubles. Um, th this, this fucking animal behavior has got to stop. And then another cop shot in the back in Chester, uh, Pennsylvania, which is just a wonderful place. 75% uh, black uh, community over there. Uh, they are under what amounts to martial law right now for the past week. They've been under martial law. There's a curfew enacted. Everyone's off the streets by 9 o'clock because there has been too many shootings and, and murders in this uh, town. So uh, this cop gets shot in the back. And it's just this, I, I, I was saying, it's this behavior that is unacceptable, yet completely accepted. No one wants to call it out that there is such a disproportionate number of black people pulling this kind of shit and, and killing police officers and, you know, themselves. There's plenty of black-on-black -black crime. That's why the cops are in these neighborhoods. Uh, and, 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 and I had one guy say, why don't you look at the cause of the problem, uh, that it's society. Read a book on fucking, you know, social behaviors and stuff. I, say, I just wrote... I don't give a fuck right. what the reason is at this point. We've gone too many years trying to figure out the reasoning. There's, there's no, no fucking figuring it out anymore. Root cause arguments, by the way, whenever someone makes a root cause argument about yeah. anything, whether it's about race or about a national country's behavior, it is always to vilify the person who has at that moment been victimized by somebody. It's exactly. always, if it's the U.S., they say, oh, root cause, look at the root causes of terrorism. It's always to, to, to vilify Israel. Or if it's yes. to look at the root causes, it's never to go, hey, look, that's shitty behavior. It's to vilify white people or the cops. Why, why is it, too, that society, society has such power um, with black people that it completely, uh, it completely clears their brain of, of right and wrong? Is that what this guy was telling me when he when he was saying it's society based? It's it's this uh, thing that's just been perpetuated. So, so what you're saying, what he was telling me, was black people have no sense of right and wrong, and will just continue shooting police officers and each other because uh, they have no sense of right or, or wrong. And then when I present him with that argument, he calls me an idiot and an asshole. Uh, meanwhile, he was the one that was really right. bringing that up. And then uh, another gentleman um, was uh, uh, arguing with me, uh, more race-based stuff. And uh, their points are just, it's like guilt, white guilt, not facing the actual problem, which, you know, I could go on here and spout off what I believe the actual problem is and probably get fucking fired. 
Uh, because, <laughs> Jesus. Because, yeah, wait, because, till, <laughs> wait till the end of October. <laughs> yeah, because I do have my theories. I do have my theories, which uh, you could probably read in such uh, books like The Bell Curve and uh, other uh, uh, publications. Um, so I do have my ideas as to why this happens. But you know something? Do something about Get a leader. Get a fucking strong leader that can unite your people. Well, they got Reverend because Al, bro. your people are broken. They're busted. They have to be fixed by somebody or something. Something's got to change within the community that doesn't involve Whitey coming in and trying to help or doing this. Because cops are being fucking killed. And one guy says, he goes, well, they're not uh, drafted. You know, they join the force of their own free will. Uh, so if things like this happen, if they want to be a hero, that's their uh, problem. And I said, okay, then if they punch a pig in the fucking face, I don't want to hear it and see it on video and watch a cop uh, uh, being made to look like a bad guy because he popped some fucking douchebag cunt in the face on, on the news. They And all they showed was a clip of the cop punching... Uh, uh, that chick in the face. In that Seattle. could have absolutely ended with that cop dead with a bullet in his face. You never would have seen the clip. You never would have seen anything. But she hit him. But didn't she shove him first? And then of she, course that's she That's why did. she apologized. She actually apologized. Yeah, of course. But, I mean, the news just pounded it and pounded it. Yeah. And then the description they gave of these two, the ma male and, and uh, female, was not... Uh, they didn't say a black couple. They said they left in uh, this kind of vehicle. The, they gave the color of the vehicle. Ow. They, they they don't they don't they just keep race out of it when it's part of it. But it's just part of it. But in a police description, especially to yes. exclude race, they they name everything that's changeable. The one thing that is not oh. changeable is race. It's like if you're looking for somebody who just yes. shot cops, you should probably narrow it down. You can narrow it down a lot gender, by saying what race it is. Gender and race are two things. That right. Height, something you, you can't fuck. You can't change. Hair, if you're color. six eight. You can yeah. change that color, though. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. you cannot change height or race or gender. Yeah, and, and they just uh, uh, d don't understand because it's not the police report. The police will always say sure. black male, black female, whatever. Uh, but when the news gets a hold of that, they leave it out. I yeah. I don't know why. Uh, listen, you got DJ in Queens, a black guy. Uh, All right, DJ, what's up, brother? Thanks for the intro. Wow. <laughs> well, uh, you know what. <laughs> The only reason I say that is because it's important to the discussion. When we're just uh, shooting the shit, it doesn't matter. That's all. I'm sorry. I think people well, could figure it out. Well, listen. Uh, Jesus, I'm Anthony. I'm an avid listener to your program. <laughs> yes. Right? Yes, sir. And uh, it's hard to listen, to be honest with you, because it seems to be a, quite a bit of, uh, I, I think. Of factual statistics? No, no, no. no all right. Don't, don't, don't try to peg me. Okay. okay. I don't, that's, that's one thing. Yeah, it seems like you have a habit of saying, Black this, black that. Yep. And, and I try to deracialize some of this stuff. All right. Because it's, it's more about being. It's more about behavior. How do you deracialize? Uh, great word, by the way. Deracialize. How do you do that um, when these cops are constantly being shot by black males during traffic stops, uh, interrupting burglaries, um, uh, uh, serving warrants? How do I deracialize that when all I'm seeing is that? Wait, why, why, well, why can't you? I mean, what you're talking about, you, you can't talk about the behavior. The behavior, the behavior has to be inextricably, inextricably connected to the, the color of a person's There's, skin. It's not the color of skin. It's skin color happens. has it's nothing to do with it. You're constantly bringing it up. Skin, skin color has nothing to do with it. It's a fucking cultural problem. There is a problem in the culture that is uh, allowing a disproportionate amount of black people involved in violent crime. It, it has nothing to do with skin color. Indians, like I said, there are some Indians from India that are blacker than, than uh, African Americans. Well, the skin color has nothing to do with it. I'm spitting. Well, Anthony is, hold on, sir. Anthony actually drooled as he said that. I was spitting. Spit flew out of his mouth. <laughs> it's like I'm watching a man unravel. Uh, it's completely. <laughs> well, can, I, can I clue you in the something? Yes, sure thing, right. DJ. A lot of it has to do with, uh, in, my, in my estimation, some, some whites not being able to discern between different types of black people. That's the part. See, I, I am afflicted with the same thing you're talking about. Mm -hmm. So you and I are on the same page on a lot of this stuff. Okay. But I what I do not like 
is when uh, someone may look at me and try to pay me in a certain way, think, think that I am of a certain political pers- persuasion, that I listen to, to a certain type of music. You're talking about okay. a culture now. Let's really get into this. Yeah. You're talking about a culture now that is being uh, commodified. All right? Uh, what, does that, uh, what does that mean? I don't know what that means. It means, it means the culture is made into, has been made into a commodity. Okay. You're talking about a culture of failure that's being sold on our throats. Like your, like your channel is lovely, right? But uh, you have 20 different rock stations. Why not have a black rock station? Because black rock is on there. You Where, gotta where's Earl? You have to start seeing different images of black people so you can discern between them. Because I don't want to be caught up with the nonsense that you're talking about. It exists. Well, then you should be so fucking angry about the I fact that, that every time you turn the news on and see a suspect... Um, you can completely peg what race the suspect is based on the crime. And 99% of the time be right. You're, you're ascribing to tribalism. And I see, and I see the, the, the reverse of it all the time from a white perspective. When you talk about, for instance, uh, you talked about Obama. Mm-hmm. This is somewhat of a tangent, but related. When you I... talk about Obama, and like, well, look at how many black people, 90% of the black folks voted for Obama and that kind of thing. Well, you had 43 other presidents that were white that were voted for white people. White people are able to, to uh, I mean, for instance, if, if Obama was able to, to um, have a, a, uh, a, black, a black vice president, that would have been an issue for, for white people. But white people can choose white vice presidents all day long. There's no thought about it. So you need to start inverting some of, the, some of what you're saying. Well, here, here's, here's, the, here's the issue I had with black people voting for Obama, was the fact that he was black. It was not based on anything but race. It wasn't based on his platform. A lot of them, they, I saw interviews, they didn't even know what his platform was. They were just happy to have a black guy in there as president. No, no, no. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. You've had, other, you've had other black folks that have voted for, for, for uh, that were also running in the past, and it, they didn't get that kind of, that kind of thing. He was the, the right black person that black people felt comfortable with. And also, any black, black person black running for, any black person running for president under a serious ticket, not, you know, when, when Jesse Jackson was trying to run. I mean, a seri- he was a serious uh, uh, a Democratic ticket, picked him up, not an independent. Um, you would have gotten the black vote because of race, just based on race. Wait, but black folks vote, like, 90% Democratic anyway? Yeah, I know. I understand. Okay, but, no, listen, I'm a conservative. But they were dragging people. They were they were dragging people in to vote that had never voted before, that only voted because he was black. Well, why don't you explain this for the for the other 43 presidents where whites have voted for other white people? Because that's person, been the only viable. He could not even choose a a black or a brown running mate because it would have been offensive. It was the only viable on ticket. The other side. You don't see it on the other side that it's normal for you. But there are only white people running. We don't think of it as race. I wasn't voting for presidents. I wasn't voting for presidents based on the fact that, oh, he's white. Let me uh, vote for him. And they were, they were only white candidates. Anthony, Anthony yep. you don't have to think that way. You don't have to think that way. You don't have to think that way. So you, talk, you think about the world as if, it's, as, if there's equal, as if there's ultimate parity. You don't have to parity. think that way either. How about assimilating to the whole country and being an American and taking this whole have to embrace a fucking culture and throwing it out the fucking window? How about you just assimilate to this country and the way this country runs and fucking not shoot cops and not fucking sling dope and fucking uh, not have complete neighborhoods in disarray, falling apart, where cops uh, are called constantly and then shot at when they show up? How about that shit? Well, listen, I'm not here to make, I'm not here to make excuses. I'm not, I'm not into victimization. I'm not into so don't try to pin me as if I'm trying to make excuses for people. I'm not. I just said you you based on you know you. All I'm saying is I'm not. I'm not some uh, victimization uh, liberal. I'm not saying that, DJ. You you sound. You're making a very good point. You're very intelligent. I I understand and I like this debate. It's very good. It's not just emotionally based. Uh, Well, on my part, did I raise a good point about uh, ultimate parity? Though is that how you said it? Well, ultimate parity. In other words, when 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 Anthony not open when Anthony speaks. He talks about things as if, well, there's, there's, there's black and white. Uh, it, well, why is it that black people can call, have, have, why do they have BET and this kind of thing? And why is it, you know, why is it black entertainment television or white entertainment television? I never really get on that whole thing. To tell you the truth, I don't. You, you don't have to call it white entertainment television because you have CBS for that. You have NBC for that. You have the Senate for that. You're, not ta- you're, you're talking as if the world has, has, has always been based on, on disparity. 
There's no such thing as parity. You don't think there are other minorities in this country that have assimilated to society and are productive members of society and not uh, um, a disproportionate amount of burden on, on our society? There is a di I'm not saying everybody here. I'm saying it's a disproportionate amount of violent crime in the black community. It shouldn't be there. Okay, I'm not disputing it. I'm not, see, I'm not one of these guys make excuses. You are right. That you are talking about a disproportionate amount of, of crime. That is correct. All I'm saying is that some of this will be ameliorated if you would, if you would stop having a, a culture that's being thrown down our throats when you're talking about the rap music. All this stuff is, is causing a certain type of, um, of malaise or it's, it's, it's mm -hmm. exacerbating it. And, and, uh, and there is a corporatized thing going on because I deal with this. When you go to a bookstore, when you when you want to see, if you go to the black section, you know everything now is like it has like a ghetto theme to it now. Yeah, so, yeah. So really, you're talking about you're really talking about. Uh, see, if you if you were to see like okay, in your in your world, I'm gonna put it this way, you see all these different types of depictions as normal. In my world, I'm seeing a ghettoized thing. That's supposed to be, that's supposed to define me. So you get annoyed, mm. like you get annoyed. You mentioned Black Rock, like you get annoyed, like as a black guy that. That like people look at you and don't don't automatically think like hey maybe this guy likes rock music or maybe this guy likes other things uh, they'd look at you and think he likes this music and that's it and that's who he is. Well, I'll give you an example. Uh, I was working at one of my friends right. He's, he's an officer by the way, police officer. And I went to this place to get a radio fixed. And I don't think I look any you know I I'm very conscious of my appearance because I think that way. And uh, the salesperson comes up to me and he goes to this whole thing. What's up, my brother? You know, <laughs> Jesus. my friend looked at me, my friend, my, friend told, my, friend, my friend says to me, he said, listen, doesn't he know you have like two degrees? I said, I said you know, and I said, listen, I'm not going to jump down this guy's throat. I just, I just let it pass. But I said, just on sight, he, he didn't think I spoke the King's English. I don't know what was going on. <laughs> that's, just, that's like a bad sitcom scene. Yeah, yeah, that's really, exactly. <laughs> Unbelievable. And let me tell you, I'm not one of these guys. I'm, I'm always talking about this, this thing that's, that's being pushed on our throats. As a, as a collective, as to how we're supposed to act and think, and I think I think so. Again, some of this would be would be uh, shunted if you start to see different depictions, people doing different things. Where okay, this guy's doing this, this guy's doing that. So it's it's normal because now, again, because I do a little bit of radio myself on the internet. That's a separate thing because I'm trying to make it where people say, okay, this guy's talking a little differently. Where can people mm -hmm. where can people check your show out? It's, it's called Afro Nerd Radio. And Afro what? That way for, for a purpose. <laughs> AfroNerdRadio.com. And, we, and we, I talk about uh, conservative politics, that black folks were conservative, by and large, many years ago. And there's a certain way we're supposed to think. And now the, the culture and the corporate culture also buys into that. If I go to a store and say, well, you guys don't, you know, you guys don't listen to rock. A few days ago in Brooklyn, you had this thing called Afropunk. It's a big underground uh, black rock thing that has like 40,000 black kids, black and brown kids on skateboards, so not the stereotype. MTV covered it for like a second, hmm. that's it. Okay? Uh, it just gets, again, you're not getting multiple depictions so people can say, so blacks and whites can say, okay, wait a minute, he's not who I thought he was. So you're saying if, if, if the media showed only like white skateboarders and surfers and that mentality, after X amount of years, white people would go, we don't all fucking surf. And we don't all skateboard and talk like a bunch of vapid assholes. <laughs> I, I see what you're saying. I mean, I definitely understand what you're saying. <clears throat> I mean, listen, again, when I go to these stores, it's being thrown down. I mean, I have, I have like, problems with other black folks who try to pin me saying, well, you know, why are you conservative? So, well, why not? Why, why can't I be? Yeah. You know, it's like you're, you're, you have it's like, it's a textbook for, for black thought. I, and it's, I, and it's, a, it's a singular textbook, and that's it. I understand where, where you're coming from with that. But I, I started this just talking about crime and, and that disproportionate number uh, of, of, viol of violent crime in the black community that is getting – it's so out of hand, and you can't mention it. It's this fucking – it's right in your face, yet if you talk about it, I'm called a racist. But but it's what I'm seeing. What's that? I'll give you another clue. By the way, a lot of black people are conservative, not not in a Republican Democrat way. They vote Democrat because that's that serves blacks a lot better than Republicans.
but uh, the, most black people go to church. They're very fucking anti-gay marriage and gay. They're, they're much more conservative the than typically DL. liberal. Mm. Well, yeah, I'm the DL. I mean, DL, well, uh, many of us. I mean, many of them. <laughs> <laughs> I think something else you might not have thought of. Yeah. Huh? We don't. We don't know. Do we know who the Asian leader is? Do we know who the Hispanic leader is? But you sure enough know who, but pre-Obama, you know who the black leader is or leaders, whether it's yep. Jesse Jackson or, or a, a Reverend Sharpton, their president, co-president, they interchange every so often. Yeah. But the bottom line is uh, oh. you're, you're specifically giving given a leader. Nobody else has a leader, but we have a leader. Well, so these guys guy. step up, and all they do is race bait and uh, uh, only uh, take on these causes – that um, are, are very racial. They never... You know what? You need to start, and I say you personally, <clears throat> the mm -hmm. culture has to start, start to allow different voices so you can say, okay, wait a minute, I didn't think of it that way. See, when I, when I, I challenge black folks on, on black radio all the time, and you know what it is? They say the light bulb goes on. So, oh, wait, I didn't think of it that way because you're not going to hear from me. You have to hear my perspective. You hear somebody else, some monosyllabic uh, syllabic, uh, black person who can barely enunciate his, a word or something and get into this whole democratic diatribe. They will never allow, even on black radio, they will not allow me to speak this way. Mm -hmm. So you need to start allowing people, not, not letting uh, Jesse Jackson, because the impression is he's the singular voice for 30 million black people. That's ludicrous. You start showing yeah. different voices, different political persuasions, some of this, some of it will amel ameliorate. Right now, you're not getting it. You, you know what? You know what? The, you know what those people are called, though. They're called Uncle Toms in the media uh, by other black leaders like Reverend Al and and uh, Jesse Jackson. If anybody, um, you, you you get uh, a black uh, Republican, and um, they show him on the news uh, speaking. And, of course, he's an Uncle Tom, he's fucking kowtowing to the man, all that bullshit, because uh, the black community doesn't want to see that. They doesn't want to be this, they doesn't want to be this uniting with the rest of the country. There's a, uh, there is such a separatism between whites and blacks as they try to make it seem with commercials and TV shows that we're all hanging out at barbecues together and having a great old time. And meanwhile, it's such... Uh, separatism, but again, that can't be spoken about, and it can't really be shown. Wait, you and your Asian and black friend don't reach in and fight for the last glass of Sunny Delight? No. <laughs> That's how it is Never. in my, how it is in my <laughs> home. And then when we don't have it, the ethnic kids beat my mother over the head with the toaster. So where the Sunny D, bitch? <laughs> uh, yes, DJ, uh, wrap up, please. Okay, just quickly. When yep. you talk about... Uh, well, you know, you, you might be called an Uncle Tom or whatever. That's a very easy argument to dispel because I'm, I'm the quick to say, wait a minute. You are, you're saying that uh, Snoop Dogg or a Crip or mm -hmm. any of the other black folks, that they don't, that their imagery, their, their minstrel type imagery, energy, I'm sorry, uh, imagery doesn't uh, come off as a, as a Uncle Tom image. I'm the Uncle Tom because I'm, or, or Dr. Cosby who brought up some of this stuff. He's the Uncle Tom, but the people who actually, who actually, uh, are, are responsible for the behavior, they get a pass. I even mm -hmm. gave Imus a pass. You can't, give, uh, you can't talk about Imus doing his thing for uh, whatever he did when he talked about the, the uh, Rutgers players. Yeah. But, then, but then give Snoop Dogg and his crew a 20-year pass for what they said about black women. See, well, well no yeah, exactly. Yeah, I know. That's, that's part of the argument, too. To say that. I, I understand. Like, don't get me wrong, DJ. I understand your side of this argument. I really do. But it, it just comes back again to what I initially was talking about with, the, with crime. I have no problem if, uh, you know, people want to walk down the street with their ass hanging out. I, I, like, I, I they do, brought that I up. Do. It's like, all right, you do. But that's your, you take <laughs> up that cause. You do that. My issue is fucking rampant crime rampant crime uh in the black community it it it's it's beyond me i don't know why people don't talk about it more why people don't talk about how racially based it is wh where it comes from i don't want to hear social fucking ills that that cause it uh i just want a solution all i have to say is to stop selling us failure some of it would some of it would would, would diminish it, it doesn't help that you see uh the the rap music uh, buries it in the ground. Uh, every the the, the, uh, the the media buries it in the ground. You're talking about so failure being sold to you. So there's no there's no concept when when that's sold to somebody. 
it completely negates, I said negate, it completely negates the uh, right and wrong in your, in, in your mind. Like, uh, not you, I'm saying in, in a, a, a criminal's mind. It just, that shit goes out the window? No, no, no. Listen, I, I, I agree with you that you, I'm not going to try to make excuses for the disproportionate crime and what's going on. I will say this. I say that it, it afflicts uh, people of color more so than white folks because uh, I think you would, you would see more of this stuff going on, uh, more of an outcry if whites were afflicted by it more. Well, you make it seem as if you personally are being afflicted by this stuff. I'm the I, guy. I have to. You know something? Let me tell you something. By it. I am. I'm affected and afflicted by this through other, uh, not, not the same way you are, uh, uh, but in other ways I am. They're, they're uh, fi a financial burden. Um, uh, I have friends that are police officers that, you know, I, you, you're constantly worrying about uh, listen, uh, think, I problems. I, listen, in, I have friends of the cops, too, and they tell me the same thing. It is an issue. It's dis it is a disproportionate problem. Uh, you're talking about a segment of the black community. You're not talking about the black community in its entirety. No, and I'm but I'm talking about a disproportionate, a disproportionately dispropor large uh, number uh, based on population. It, it just doesn't figure. Again, some of this might diminish if you stop selling that image. Right now, you're talking about an image that just it just keeps on well, who's selling it. Who's well, the, selling the it? The structure is selling it. There's no way to get around that. They're selling you the pants that, 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 that are uh, slung below your, your waist. They're selling you the music that keeps... The music has no positivity in it whatsoever. <laughs> I've never seen it in my life like this. You yeah. go to the 70s, 60s, the music never talked about openly killing people, selling drugs. It wasn't doing it. What do you think that... You're talking, it's called programming. You have programmers. Mm -hmm. Programming means what it means. You, you, know, the, you know about what happened in, 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 uh, in Germany? You talk, you talk about a, a sure do. media assault that's, that is essentially tantamount to programming, propaganda. Propaganda yeah. makes people, uh, their minds... Go well, this is, sounding, this is sounding a little conspiracy-based. I mean, no, it's it, it, it sounding... It, I'm not like the guy from yesterday. No, no, I understand, but, but is, this, is this white people <laughs> trying to put an image forth that will perpetuate uh, crime in the black community? Is that, is that it? How about people get together in these shitty neighborhoods and somehow try to build something positive there? Because the second someone tries, they're either killed or the place is fucking ransacked or uh, like uh, empowerment, self-empowerment uh, in, in, in a neighborhood, not having uh, like Harlem. They got uh, people were up in arms that white businesses we're coming in, buying up these landmarks in Harlem, building them, making them beautiful, and and Harlem is uh, uh, undergoing a renaissance period. Listen, but how about yeah. black people get in there and fucking do it, and then have something to be proud of and not destroy and shit like that? How about how about that? W one thing, your the guy you had on yesterday, Alex Jones. Although I, I couldn't handle him because he, he made me not, not want to leave the house after this guy. Uh, <laughs> Uh, he used a term called learned helplessness. You guys need to look this up and see what learned helplessness means. Learned helplessness has a lot to do, a lot to do with what you're talking about. If you, mm. if you, literally, it defines itself. You're teaching people to fail. It, it really, if you don't see any positive imagery, and you're talking about, uh, again, a propagandized paradigm, what do you think is going to happen? White folks are able to see positive and negative, that the entire spectrum is in their face. And our face is failure. Well, how about, uh, you know, keeping a family, how about playing keeping playing? a family together? How about not knocking up, like, t 12 different women? How about, how about, like, looking inside your community and realizing there are huge problems that are perpetuating this generation after generation? And, and not just mus music and stuff. It's a lifestyle that that I I seriously would hope people are intelligent enough to realize this is the problem. This is the root cause of it. Let's fix it. Well, Anthony, I have a question for you. Yes. In 1950, uh, black and white families, as far as having a a dual family uh, structure, mm -hmm. we're, we're we're on par with each other. Uh huh. Something something happened between let's say 1964. 364 to the present, 
where these numbers... Civil rights movement? <laughs> yeah. Okay, now, there's something there. It wasn't always like this. You didn't always see this. Even when we were going through hell, going through segregation, all these kind of things. But, but again, you're acting as if this is something that's always happened. You, you had, you had uh, even with all the crap we had to deal with, you still had uh, two family homes. You had a father in the house. You had a lot of positivity going on. Something mm -hmm. is going on now. This is, why, this is why I get into a political thing, where I think a lot of it has to do with uh, being a democratic and lib that liberal mindset. And this whole thing, as I mentioned, learned helplessness. The government, as much as I, I like Obama image-wise, I don't necessarily agree with his politics, but I mm -hmm. thought that we, we needed to see him there. Because, again, you're, you have 43 presidents that were white. I think, I think... 44 presidents yeah. and 44th, now there's a problem. I think a lot had to do with uh, welfare uh, and this uh, just, just keeping uh, this whole uh, weakness and uh, welfare state going, and I think that had a big uh, problem with it. Yeah, we, we, I, I think we got to take a break. Hey, yeah. DJ, where can people hear you again? Because you gave, yeah, give yeah. your radio, your internet radio show plug. You're, 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 you do obviously surprise some pretty hey, radio. Do a good job. Yeah, it's it's uh, AfroNerdRadio.com. Oh, AfroNerd, N-E-R-D? AfroNerd. You chuckle on that. There's a reason I have to, listen, some of us would, would rather be called another N-word. I chose the nerd word. <laughs> that's cool. Oh, that's all, all right. right. Well, Afro Nerd Radio. Thank you, sir. Thanks a lot, DJ. DJ in Queens, uh, we'll take a break. A lot of people want in on this discussion. Well, well, dude, nothing Michael. lights the phones faster than race. It's I amazing. Know, I know. Because when you can speak openly and honest about it in an open forum like this, uh, people will respond. You want it's you want amazing. Al real fast? Yeah, might as well. Al, Al. Hey, how's it going, guys? Listen, what's up, Al? I just, I'm gonna be real quick. I grew up in Brooklyn. I'm a black male, like a, from Haitian descent. Mm -hmm. I could have easily been a banger. I could have easily did this shit. But you know what? My mindset was was gauged a different way. Now, when you generalize about the ghetto blacks, there's so many ghetto blacks that don't know the taste of real life. That's why they're running around, blowing each other up. And knocking, knocking their girls up and not paying any, you know, child support and doing all this crazy shit. And in the reality of things, just take a moment in your life and realize who you are. And it's like self-worth, knowing I, who you are and knowing what you can do and just going out and doing it. It's hard to imagine. I, I'm just going to the basic human root of knowing right from wrong. I can't imagine that even the most hardcore gangbanger, whatever the fuck they've been through that got him there, doesn't understand doesn't comprehend that there is consequence, that there is right and wrong when you pull a gun out and shoot a cop in the fucking face. M most, I, most criminals, I'll say this, most crooks don't shoot cops. I, I, even the mob, the, the <laughs> only reason the mob didn't do it was because of the, of the heat it brought. They were more organized than, say, you know, some guy on parole or two mm. fucking gangs shooting it out. The mob was, because they're typically older people in the mob, they were more organized, they had a business sense. But if, if, the, if shooting cops would not have brought the heat down and shut down businesses, yeah. the mob would have probably killed 50 times the amount of cops they killed. But it was simply a business decision. If we kill cops, more of them there, show up. There's this knee-jerk emotional reaction to a, a man sitting in a vehicle. He has wants and warrants on himself, and the cops are going to bring him in. And he makes a conscious decision that I'm not going to let them take me to jail. I'm going to shoot them both in the head and kill them. He's got to know I that totally that isn't right. Yeah. I, I have I, to believe I, at least that. I to Listen, Ant, I totally agree with you. But th like I said, you're talking about people who have no self-worth. Okay? The whole fact of, of the guy shooting the cop in the face because he's going to go back to jail means that he doesn't believe that his self has any has any worth in this planet. You know, all he can do is, is continue to, to welch off the system and, you know, until he gets locked up again. Well, then, I, I it's can't... It's a cycle. It's not, it, ne it never comes back to, to focus and reality for these people. Well, unless never... something is done within the community, not whitey helping or fucking government intervention or social programs, someone's got to wake the fuck up in the black community and really realize that there's a giant problem that is being perpetuated by generation after generation of the same mistakes being made over and over again that are just pumping out um, 
a, a horrible element. I can't yeah. believe two cops got caught. Like even with political correctness, and cops have to be polite now and have to do exactly. things to worry about. I think that's a problem. But two uh, two guys don't usually get caught like that, like making such. I understand a glaring yeah, error there. Right, but listen, look at it this way: you never you never hear like uh, Haitian Americans or people that have come come to this country and flourish just like the Italian Americans, just like uh -huh. all these other people. Uh, my my parents came here with nothing. They had nothing, and they made stuff, and they made sure that I knew that going this route would definitely end me in peril. And guess what? I kept my head on straight. I could have easily, I mean, I grew up in Brownsville, Brooklyn. I could have easily yep. been a blood, banging with these guys, you know, like, but every day I went to school, I kept my head down, kept, See, kept moving good. in the right direction. And that's exactly what a lot of people need to do is separate themselves from that, that gang mentality. But, and and that's, that's what I want to say also. I want it because I get shit for this all the time. I'm not generalizing. I'm not saying every black person is uh, the example I'm using. Uh, I'm, just, I'm just saying there's a disproportionate number and it really needs to be addressed. Um, I, I, you know, great, good for you. I'm glad that you were able to, uh, to get yourself out of that shit um, and, and, and uh, make a life for yourself. And I'm sure there are plenty of other people uh, black people that that have done the same thing. I understand that. I just can't deal with this mindset and disproportionate number where sh shooting fucking police officers and killing each other over nothing is is, right. is fine. It's got to be addressed. Right. It's got to be addressed. You're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. I love your show, Jim. We'll try to come check you out at the Bogota. Yeah, oh, I wasn't right going to mention that. I was trying to keep that quiet. Oh.